next, let's uh, talk about uh, Han Feizi. Han Feizi perceives that the doctrines of Shen Buhai and Shangyang are not antagonistic, but are complementary. Lord Shang's Fa provided the program for controlling the entire society. Shen Buhai's Shu provided the organization for implementing the enlightened ruler's program. Because Lord Shang neglected the principle of proper bureaucratic organization, various powerful elements in the state were able to maintain their own basis of power and even to use Lord Shang's reforms to enhance their own power. Lord Shang's own tragic death resulted from this fatal oversight in the matter of the control of officials. Shen Buhai, on the other hand, failed to establish a unified program of reform and did not even integrate the legal structure of the state. Scheming officials, were thus able to take advantage of the irrationality of the laws. Han Feizi seems to have sought the ultimate common foundation of legalism at a deeper level. What penal laws and bureaucratic devices have in common is that they are all universalistic and personal and objective mechanisms for controlling human behavior. They are all based on the simple behavioral mode of man. The bureaucratic devices pay more attention to the more intangible gratification of honor and prestige. Even Lord Shang had admitted these factors into his model of man. In Han Feizi's synthesis, there is a third component, which had been neglected by Shang Yang and Shen Buhai. It is Shen Dao's principle of the mystery of authority. The entire system, in the end, rests on the authority of the ruler. Shen Dao was acutely conscious of the fact that, in the end, authority does not rest on coercion. The power to coerce rather rests on the acceptance of authority, Shi. How? the people are brought to accept the commands of the ruler remains the ultimate mystery of authority. Without authority, the ruler cannot be the ultimate source of all the impersonal codes and mechanisms of control, which maintain the entire social order. When the system is functioning, the system itself enhances the mantle of mystery and the sense of remoteness which surrounds the figure of the ruler, but finally, it is the symbolic aura of authority surrounding the figure of the ruler which makes possible the implementation of the system. Without the internalization of this aura in the minds of the people, the entire system may readily collapse. In a system which would eliminate personal initiative as the source of social behavior, everything comes to depend on a symbolic person. In a system which attempts to demystify tradition, Authority to be authority must ultimately, in some sense, be based on a pre-existent mystery. Authority in the legal system should ultimately be established authority and not 
charismatic authority. Charisma leads us back to the pernicious emphasis on the exalted role of individual person. The legalists do not arrive at the notion of an abstract entity such as the nation or the fatherland as the ultimate locus of authority. Within the dominant cultural orientation with its conception of a universal social political order, the center is from the outset a universal kingship. The locus of kingship must be in the person of a king. Nevertheless, although Shen Dao's conception of authority assumes that authority must have its locus in individual rulers, in fact, the stress falls on the abstract moment of the authority of the rulership, and not on the person, the ruler. If any subject can take it into his head that, because of his personal virtue or wisdom, or because of the bestowal of the mandate of heaven, he has the right to overturn an established ruler, no matter how weak or incompetent. Then, the abstract basis of authority is undermined. Obedience to authority must not be based on the accident of the personal quality of the present occupant of the seat of authority. Han Feizi does not admit the legitimacy of the overthrow of the Xia or Shang dynasties. Quote, Kings Tang and Wu consider themselves to be righteous and killed their lords." And quote. He is aware that dynasties have fallen and rulers overthrown. He is aware that their incompetence has something to do with these events. He is also aware that in the course of time, new dynasties and rulers have come to acquire the symbolic support of authority. He admits that these are the facts of history. But he cannot for a moment sanction the right of individuals to overthrow established authority as a principle. The Confucianists exalt the ascriptive authority of parents, but they feel free to exalt moral heroes who undermine the authority of legitimate laws. This is a reflection of their personalistic emphasis on the moral agency of individuals. Authority as well as law and method, is ultimately an impersonal power rooted in the Tao itself. In a fully realized legalist utopia, the ruler exercises his control of the society through the impersonal mechanisms of Fa and Shu. His own personal character will become a matter of later concern. Han Feizi's synthesis is of the ideas of Lord Shang, Shen Buhai, and Shen Dao turns out to be a remarkably consistent vision. In the world of the third century, it is a vision which reflects a belief in the possibility of a reunification of the Chinese world under the hegemony of a state dedicated to the legalist sciences of wealth and power. In the book of Han Feizi, there is outlines of an ultimate universal utopia lying beyond the immediate goals of the legalist program. 
once the law and the methods of rational government have become internalized in the habits of the people, the old dysfunctional attitudes based on the belief in private action will disappear. The irrelevancies of the cultural heritage with its stress on personal morality, the adherence of the wandering philosophers to their inane private doctrines and private values and private warriors will have disappeared. The public interest will reign supreme. Peace, harmony, and general welfare will prevail. Han Feizi was born in the weak state of Han. He was a member of the ruling family and an aristocrat, like Li Si, the future minister of the first emperor of Qin. Han Feizi is also a disciple of Xunzi. Like Li Si, Han Feizi has been ultimately unconvinced by his teacher's efforts to defend Confucianism. He is full of rage and indignation against a world that is unprepared to recognize his merits. He lacks the doist indifference of Shen Dao, although he is in search of doist basis for his own convictions. His public career is basically tragic. He failed to influence the incompetent ruler of Han. Then he finally gained access to the young ruler of Qin, the incomparable Qin Shi Huangdi. He evidently regards Qin Shi Huangdi as the living embodiment of his ideal of the enlightened ruler. However, in the end, he incurs the suspicion of the future emperor, and he is executed. His fellow student, Li Si, is by no means a powerful theoretician, but he is evidently a much more adroit, instinctive politician. He plays a large role in implementing Han Feizi's theories. Han Feizi shares Shen Dao's contempt for the role of men of worth and enlightened rulers in human affairs. His entire system is designed to eliminate the need for them. However, as an ambitious activist filled with an overwhelming confidence in the validity of his science, he must believe that in the circumstances of his time, the true system can be brought into being only by true men of worth and truly enlightened rulers. The true science of behavior which eliminates the need for erroneous private theories can be actualized only by worthy individuals such as Lord Shang and himself. They possess true theory. In his essay entitled Solitary Indignation, he posits an unbridgeable abyss between the Shi who possess the true knowledge and the true method, such as himself and the entire pack of self-seeking peddlers of false ideas and misleading ideals who lead astray the weak-minded rulers of the time. Despite his commitment to the simple behaviorist model of man, quote, Shi who possess true knowledge, unquote, stand beyond this model in terms of intellectual capacity and moral integrity. 
The man of true knowledge and true method is in fact also a man of deep and unbending moral strength devoted to the highest interests of his ruler. Historic evolution may have created a situation favorable to the introduction of the true system. But the system can in the end only be realized by such like men. They possess transcendental qualities which sharply differentiate them from the general mankind. Despite his commitment to Shen Dao's conception of authority, Han Feizi also has some important reservations concerning Shen Dao's total elimination of the role of great individuals in human affairs. It is true that a sage or a man of worth can do nothing without authority. But evil and incompetent rulers may use authority to disorder the world and destroy their own authority. In the circumstances of Han Feizi's time, individual men of exceptional worth who are able to obtain the ear of truly enlightened rulers may play a crucial role in transforming the world. They are able to create a world where social engineers are no longer necessary. Okay, so much for this lecture. Assignment today. Could you summarize the doctrines of Shang Yang, Shen Bu Hai, and Han Feizi? Thank you.